In this video I will show you how we can make a timeline mission app with the DJI SDK. So based on my first lesson I added some new code. For the user interface I added two new buttons, a mission start button and a mission stop button. Now let's start the application. We will go later into the code and see how it works. I will first use the simulator to see how it works and we will see later on on a real shooting how the app works. I use the Phantom 4 Pro for the simulator and in the debug window we can see each timeline element, so the yaw and also the photo actions. We use the full spherical grid in this app that has several advantages like sunrise sunset shooting and also less images for better stitching results. The grid for the shooting is individual for each aircraft. That's the first thing we do in the code. We detect the aircraft and then we build the grid for the timeline shooting. So each aircraft has optimized settings to go quick to the shooting and not to have too much overlap but also to have not too less overlap. I use the timeline element marker to indicate how many images we already took. At the end of the mission we have to reset the virtual stick method. That's important to regain control on the aircraft. We can pause the mission, resume the mission and also stop the mission. That's very important for mission code that we can immediately stop if some things go wrong with the mission. So this mission is nearly at the end and in the next section I will add some print functions to show what we have in the grid and also what's a timeline mission. So I add two print functions to indicate the grid array and also the timeline array. And then we can see what's inside these arrays. A simple print function is very easy to use and shows us what's happening into an app. Now I restart the app and so we can see the two arrays. We have the grid array and we have the timeline array. So we can see the coordinates of the aircraft and we can also see the timeline array with the different functions, yaw and photo actions. And now let's go into the code to see the difference between lesson 1 and lesson 2. The last time I showed you how we can build a DJI app with only a few lines. So we have the default layout view controller and in the product communication manager we build some code to get the settings for the camera, max distance, radius, etc. Now in the lesson 2 I will show you how we can start a panorama shooting. So for this reason we add two buttons. We have a mission start button and a stop button. We can see the connection here. So we have the two buttons. Then for the view did load I add a key listener. We need that for the timeline elements. So there we can see we add a listener for the timeline in progress. So we can trigger all the timeline elements when they started, they finished and we can also trigger the end of the timeline mission when the elements is equal to nil. For the uh, mission start button I add an action. For the timeline elements, so first we check if a timeline mission is running. If not, <coughs> we can start it. So we have first to use the advanced virtual stick method that the aircraft stays right on the place even on windy conditions. 
and then we start the panorama. I will show also the stop button. The stop button is hidden at the start from the app, but when we start a mission, we have to add the stop button to immediately stop a mission in case. And then we trigger if the mission will be paused or resumed. And here we can see the stop mission action. So we stop the timeline, unschedule everything, and we stop also the advanced virtual stick. When we go to the shoot timeline panorama, we first need to know our aircraft model. So I get this with these two lines and then I can search the settings for the panorama when I know the aircraft model. Then we will build a grid. You can see it here. We will build a grid with the settings we get from the aircraft model. And when the grid is built, we check first the number of pictures to take so that we can see if our SD card has enough space. That's also an inbuilt function in my framework. Then we unschedule everything and we build the mission with the shoot timeline panorama and the grid we just built. Then we have some error handlings and we dispatch the start of the mission about one second and we start the timeline mission. Now let's see in the reshooting how it works. I use the Phantom 4 Pro, change some camera settings and then start the mission. Now we can see the button title is changing to only one, two, three, four. So we can see how many images we already took and we can also see the stop button. That's very important if you have to stop immediately the mission. If we press on the running button, the mission will pause and then we can resume the mission. If we push on the stop button, the mission is immediately stopped and we have to restart the whole mission. So here you can see the full spherical shooting in my village. It's about 122 meters altitude. For a timeline mission, we can use JPEG or RAW for the images. As you can see, I use iOS 13 in the dark mode. We can see it on the map. The advantage of a full spherical shooting is on the Nardier that we have only a few images and that gives better stitching results. So we are nearly at the end and now the mission ended. I checked it today with the Mavic Air 2. So same procedure. With the Mavic Air we can go up to plus 15 degrees pitch angle. Not so much as for the Phantom 4 Pro, but it's enough for the 5 cent shoot method. So I'll speed up this section. You can see it's the same procedure and at the end we will see some final result with the 5 cent shoot method. So actually we are at lesson 2. You can see we can get full spherical panorama. It's all on GitHub. It's open source so you can use it for free. Now let's see the final result of an image. And in the next lessons we will learn how to add pitch angle, graphic indication like on the DigiGo 4 app and other stuff. So I hope you like this video. Until the next time, thank you for watching.